And we're live. Good morning. Morning, people. Thanks for being patient. If you're watching the playback, I am late. We're 30 minutes into the market. And that's what's happening. Um, as you can see here, I drew just a couple lines just upon sitting down. Looks like we are in a nice ascending channel trade right now, which is great. Seems like, again, buying sentiment is up. As you can see in the past two days, same thing. So that's great. Uh, we'll see if any news breaks out, anything like that. We do have the Bernard um, testimony that we are hearing, the hearing uh, for nomination, whatever it is, nomination hearing. There we go. Uh, so we're going to see what that is. I'm still waking up, so just give me a second. Um, but there is some interesting things I saw, as in there is a Web 3.0 ETF on the way. That's right. Web 3.0 ETF. So we got to see what that's about. I will cover that as well. Um, let me see if this stream is going for the Bernard hearing. It's hard to find it, honestly. Which is strange. I don't know why. Bernard stream. Hmm. Okay, they're still not live, but that's okay. We'll cover it. It's always it's always like twenty minutes of speeches anyway. First, so we got time. Oh, as you can see, we broke below the channel here. Oh, hold on. Let me get my live chat thing going on. There we go. I was sitting back here in nine twenty eight looking for the stream. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Woke up just a tad late, and I apologize. That's that's an oops. That's a big oops on my part. But I'm here now. Here now. So no worries. Um, but yeah, let's cover this Web 3.0 ETF real quick, because it's super interesting. Uh, let me find an article. Um... <laughs> Where is it? So the one article I found is, um, I think it's New York Times, and sadly you need like a subscription, and I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I don't care that much. Let's see what's Senate going Committee on. on Banking, Housing, oh. Government Affairs will come to order. Okay, the hearing is live. We're good. Sick. Oh, it's Bloomberg. I don't. Come on. Come on, I don't have Bloomberg. I'm not paying for these news sources. Shoot, I really want to know what's in Web 3.0. Uh, ETF, the ETF for it. I'm really curious. Um, hmm. Oh, wait, maybe I found one. Is this an article I can actually look at? Seems like it. Okay, here we go. Here we go, y'all. There we go. Okay, so check it out. Yep, so the first Web 3.0 ETF is on the way, and its ticker will be WIII, I'm guessing. W3, basically, is what they're saying. Um, yeah. So ETF issuers have seized everything from Bitcoin futures to blockchain, NFTs, and more to tap into the DeFi boom. It was only a matter of time before they got into Web 3, 100%. Uh, latest iteration, money managers capitalizing on all things crypto, Simplify Asset Management filed an application to launch Simply Vault, or Simplify, Simplify Vault Web 3.0 ETF. Cool. Uh, are they going to tell me what's in it? I just, I just want to see what's in it. Um, okay, so, wait. So, this filing shows we're still in a bull market for uh, blockchain, crypto, thematic e equity fund launches, 100%. I mean, I agree with this ETF. I just want to know what's in it. That's all. Uh, that it will invest with some overlap to metaverse-focused ETFs as well. Okay. And that's it? I don't even, They don't even say one stock that's in it? Well, that's anticlimactic. Shoot. Okay, fine. What's the metaverse one? Metaverse ETF. Ah, okay, here we go. This one is like already um already investable, I'm pretty sure. Like you can get into it right now. So we got uh Meta Platforms, NVIDIA, Roblox, Microsoft, Unity, Snap, uh TSM, Apple, Autodesk, Amazon. Okay. 
it's pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty solid amount. Uh, mostly, obviously, in Meta platforms and NVIDIA, with second being Roblox and Microsoft. Interesting. That's a decent ETF. I mean, I like most of these companies, which is great. Snap is in here, which is interesting. I wonder why. Like, how Snap is being used. But, okay. Maybe just they're combined with Metaverse, so it's just that. But still, that's pretty cool. I thought I would see more interesting companies, to be honest. This seems a little too on the nose, if that makes sense. Uh, I guess TSM is nice. But I don't know. I thought I'd see, like, Matterport. thought I'd see, like, Roblox is a really nice one. Like, that's a more interesting kind of company. I thought it'd be more of these kind of companies. Not these, like, big blue chip things. But that's okay. That's okay. His vice chair shall be tasked with supporting efforts, uh, efforts that are already underway to empower workers and refocus. I opened a TD Ameritrade specifically for sure uh, Thinkorswim. Yeah, have good jobs I did. Growing paychecks and affordable cost of living. That also means supporting efforts to close the racial wealth and income gaps that have barely shrunk in decades. I'll take a look. That is Is that 10 a.m. dip? Exactly at 10 a.m. Look at that. Latino households earn about half as much as the average house. Yeah, you can see exactly at 10 a.m. starting the dip. That's what happens. But also maybe because the, you know, the hearing has started. Maybe people are a little, people don't like that. That's possible too. That's possible too. But yeah, pretty much perfect 10 a.m. reversal. Uh, we can bounce back pretty easily. So we'll see what happens. But let's see how low we drop. Do you use the account at all? Uh, I use it for my Roth IRA, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but not the investment account. Not the investment. But I get, I don't use Thinkorswim anymore, so it doesn't really matter to me on, you know, TD Ameritrade. I don't even think I use it. No, I use Schwab, I think, for my Roth. Either way, like, pretty much no is the answer. Pretty much no. Sec. Okay, so let's see if we can bounce on the 200. This would be pretty textbook if we bounced right here at this line. I think it's very possible. Uh, let's see what this hearing is for. Apparently, it's for banking. Um, I forget. I honestly forget. Hold on. So today's hearing is on banking, housing, and urban affairs with the U.S. Senate. Okay. To this committee supporting her. Before being designated as acting director in 2020, I'm using Weeble, and you can check the link in the description if you want to open up account. It's free, and it's a free brokerage. So in that way, it's a little bit better. And the software, again, is completely free as well. You have to pay nothing. And you get all of your same uh, indicators, patterns, everything on uh, Thinkorswim is on Weeble as well. So it just makes sense. And if you do it, you get five free stocks, which is kind of nice. From five free stocks or something like that. I forget and what the promotion is for January, but yeah, supervision and consumer pretty good. Protection and the director of the division of risk management and supervision, helping to stabilize her, na her nation's pretty banks. good. Early in her career, she she okay. served at the Resolution Trust Corporation, cleaning up and restoring faith in our financial crisis after the savings and loan crisis. Um, in a nutshell, Wait, I don't know. I don't know why the video is like. I don't know. It seems like it's from the 90s or something. I don't know why they clean. Like, they should just clean this up. Wait, is it a quality issue? I'm on max quality. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they do this. It's been too hard to find long before the pandemic. It's really not hard to fix video. I mean, I'm just saying, like, I mean, you're, you're the government. You can throw, you know, a couple thousand dollars into better equipment. I think that's okay. In their own home far more likely to pay more in rent than they can afford. And in just the past week, tragic fires in the ranking member's home state and in the Bronx have reminded us of how far we need to go to ensure that everyone has safe, affordable places to live. FHFA has an important role to play in addressing these challenges. Acting Director Thompson has distinguished herself as the person we need to lead this critical work. These nominees each of them understands the challenges our economy faces. They understand the people who make our economy work, like so many of the president's nominees. It's notable that as we recover from a pandemic that laid bare uh, just how hard understood. women especially work, 
at paid jobs in the labor market, unpaid jobs taking care of families. <laughs> Fair enough. We have two women poised to take leading roles. They passed trillion dollar bills, no problem. I think they could just get a better camera. And their lengthy years of commitment to public service, uh, ranking member to me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Governor Brainerd, and Ms. Thompson, welcome. You both have very extensive experience in your respective fields, and I commend you both for your commitment to public service. Governor Brainerd has been nominated to serve as Fed Vice Chair. The Fed has been granted significant independence to isolate it from political influence. However, Congress has given the Fed very narrowly defined monetary and regulatory missions. First, the Fed's been tasked with conducting monetary policy to promote stable prices and maximum employment. But the Fed's recent actions have failed to maintain price stability. Last year, Governor Brainerd repeatedly insisted that inflation was transitory. We've now had nine consecutive months where inflation has been more than two times the Fed's 2% target. That makes it pretty clear that inflation is not transitory. Yesterday's uh -oh. CPI release of 7%, the highest in 40 years, confirms that <laughs> further. Inflation is a tax that's eroding Americans' paychecks every day. Even though wages are growing, inflation's growing faster, and that's causing workers to fall further and further behind. I appreciate that the Fed has pivoted toward normalizing monetary policy to tackle inflation, but the Fed also needs to learn from its mistakes, and I think that begins with the Fed's new monetary policy framework, of which Governor Brainerd was an author and an outspoken advocate. The framework really subordinated the Fed's price stability mandate to try and maximize employment by, by allowing inflation to run hot. Under this approach, the Fed looked beyond employment as a whole to consider whether employment was, quote, broad-based and inclusive, end quote. What this meant was the Fed would sacrifice stable prices to see if it could achieve higher employment gains in certain demographic groups. As Governor Brainerd explained last year, the Fed should look at employment numbers on below a, the quote, here. disaggregated basis, we'll see end what quote. Happens. We and use monetary uh, very policy low on the to RSI, narrow though, employment gaps oversold, between different, so we'll quote, racial actually... and ethnic groups, end quote. Bounces. This framework risks keeping in place an inflation tax on all Americans while the Fed decides which subgroups of people should have faster job growth than others. Uh, one of the problems is that monetary policy can never equalize employment rates among different groups. In the end, the Fed would run the risk of failing on both fronts of its dual mandate because you need stable prices in order to achieve a strong economy and maximum employment. Given this fact, the Fed should really reevaluate. Okay, real quick, while this guy is attempting to, I don't know, grill Bernard on what's going on here, you guys can leave a like on the video. You guys can just leave a like. If you're watching the playback later, leave a like. If you're watching currently, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I mean, basic stuff. Basic button clicking. That's all I'm really asking. All you got to do is check where my mouse is, right? You go whoop. And then you click. And then if you subscribe, you just go whoop. Subscribe. That's it. And then you just go back to the video. You know, you just drop the cursor. That's it. You can just, that's it. That's all you got to do. It's really easy, really, really simple. Helps me out, helps your YouTube algorithm out. We all win. We all win. Seems nice. But yeah, there's that. Uh, pff, I already plugged Weeble. All right, that's it. Uh, if you haven't joined the Discord as well, do it because I post things like, like like when I'm not on time and I'm going live later, I post that. So that's important info as well if you, if you want to keep coming back to the stream, which I hope you do. Um, that's it. That's all I got. End quote. Well, I'm particularly concerned that she's advocated for the Fed to shape environmental policy through so-called climate scenario analysis. Not only does the Fed lack expertise in environmental matters, but there's no reason to believe that global warming poses a systemic risk to the financial system. As I've noted before, we haven't found a single bank that's failed in the modern era due to a severe weather event. There is a transition risk for banks associated with global warming, but that's political and regulatory in nature. It's the risk that unelected bureaucrats will attempt to impair the value of energy-related assets by cutting off credit to the energy oh sector. Boy. This isn't about whether climate change is a significant threat to our society. It's about the fact that climate policymaking requires trade-offs between costs and benefits. And Interesting. Are we talking about environmental stuff? Is that, is that on the topic list? Banking, housing, urban affairs. I guess urban affairs, technically, in a in a way, but but not really. 
All right, Toomey, get, your, get it, get it together, man. Talking about banking. Talk about the thing people care about right now. Uh, here's what's going on. Uh, we are dropping. Looks like that 10 a.m. dip is happening today. Uh, maybe it's the Sunday hearing. Maybe I don't know. It could be both. You know, the fact that they start at the same time doesn't really help. So, who knows? But uh, let's see what happens here. We are dropping low. RSI is kind of dipping back and forth. Maybe consolidating is starting to happen. Maybe. But we'll see. Um, let's take a look quick if there's any more news I can cover before we get into some crazy questions. The good stuff. RSI hitting on the one minute and the five minute. Ah. Uh, we still got a little bit of room for the five minute, but yeah, on the five minute, you can see we are hitting the 200 here, right? And so that's kind of, you're seeing the buying pressure one minute. It doesn't show it as obvious, but five minute. Yeah. Very clear that there's buying pressure here at the 200. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully consolidation starts to happen. We start a bounce or something. I can imagine MACD's curling up. So a lot of less volume going into selling. We'll see. We will see. This is, it looks like a big dip, but it really isn't. I mean, we're talking like a dollar fifty, like at the end of the day, not the hugest dip currently, but this thing can, yeah, as j just what I'm saying that like it can keep going. So there you go. Uh, whew, yeah, look at that. Get rid of this. Yeah, huge dip. Did we miss something? Are they saying stuff? Appear and testify before any duly confirmed committee of the United States Senate. Please be seated. Thank you. Governor Brainerd and uh, Acting Director oh Thompson, God, welcome, so you to, welcome to the committee. If you would chill, like to chill, introduce chill, 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 chill. members or friends Relax. in your testimony, I invite you to do that uh, at the beginning or whenever you want to. Governor Brainerd, please begin. Is that on me? What's yes. going on? There Chairman we go. Brown, Ranking Member Toomey, other members of the committee, thank you for this opportunity to appear before you. I'm greatly honored uh, to be nominated by President Biden to serve as Vice Chair of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve, and I'm delighted to be here alongside Acting Director Thompson. If confirmed, I look forward to continuing to work with members of this committee. Man needs to relax. We're seeing the strongest rebound in growth and decline in unemployment of any recovery in the last five decades. Over the past year, unemployment has fallen by 2.8 percentage points, and growth is estimated to be around 5.5%, according to a variety of private forecasts. But inflation is too high, and working people around the country are concerned about how far their paychecks will go. Our monetary policy is focused on getting inflation back down to 2% while sustaining a recovery that includes everyone. This is our most important task. When the pandemic struck in 2020, I worked closely alongside Chair Powell, Secretary Mnuchin, and many others with the support of Congress to calm financial market turmoil and save American jobs and businesses. When markets stabilized, I worked to responsibly wind down the emergency facilities that were established. And today, the economy is making welcome progress, but the pandemic continues to pose challenges. Our priority is to protect the gains we've made and support the recovery. Since 2014, as a member Man, of the just, Federal can, Open Market Committee, just I've keep supported dropping. monetary oh, policy that's responsive to economic conditions as they evolve. Drop and drop Our and drop approach and. helps sustain the longest drop so recovery far. on record with low inflation and millions of jobs. More broadly, I've worked to safeguard and grow our economy during the administrations of five presidents from both parties. I've worked on the U.S. policy response to every major financial crisis over three decades. In some foreign countries, I've seen up close how high inflation hurts workers and families, especially the most vulnerable. I'm committed to pursuing the Federal Reserve's congressionally mandated goals of price stability and maximum employment, and to maintaining the strength and resilience of our financial markets. I'm committed to the independent and nonpartisan status of the Federal Reserve. If confirmed, I look forward to supporting Chair Powell in carrying out the responsibilities assigned to the Federal Reserve and in fostering transparent 
Why, why do people hate her? I feel like people hate her. That's what I've heard, but I don't understand why. I don't know. I'm not up to date with that. Does she not stand for good things? Is she a liar? From working people, businesses, Does anyone know? Financial institutions and communities large and small around the country. Before closing, I want to thank my husband, Kurt, my daughters, Kaylin, Kira, and Chloe, for their steadfast support of my work. And I would like to commend the outstanding efforts of the many individuals across the Federal Reserve System who work so hard every day to serve the American public. Senators, I thank you for your consideration, and I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Brainerd, uh, Acting Director Thompson. Oh, my God. Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Toomey, and members of the committee, I first want to thank President Biden for nominating me to serve as the director of the Federal Housing Finance Agency. It is the greatest honor of my career Always to appear bring the market before down. you today. Yeah, I guess. Thank you to the I guess everyone hates you if you're part of the Federal Reserve anyway, no matter what you do. Hearing. So. If I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed, I look forward to working with Possible all of bounce you back. on Possible. The important issues at FHFA. I would like to introduce my sons, Jarrett and Aaron, who are here with me today. And I'd like to recognize and thank my parents, Herman and Helen Lathan. While due to COVID considerations, they are not able to be here in person, the fact that my parents are still alive to witness today's hearing is very meaningful to me. I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago to my extraordinary parents who... Okay, we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. No worries. Let's take a look at all the indices and whatnot here. Uh, you can see the S&P down. A t okay, it's basically flatlined. Russell 2K is up a little bit. The VIX is up. Okay, not bad. Not bad. Okay, what else is going on here? Wholesale prices up just 0.2% in December. Starting below, it's 200. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Fluorize sets new record. Delta CEO says 8,000 employees have tested positive for COVID. <laughs> 8,000. How crazy. Um, medical teams to hospitals in six states as Omicron. Okay, sure, sure. Mm, nothing crazy. Nothing wild stuff. Yeah. Okay. I thought I thought there'd be something to be honest. Oh wait, crypto exchange Gemini pushes into wealth management. Oh, with acquisition, Bitria. Oh, wow. that's actually kind of big. All right. I, okay. I guess nothing's actually happening. Never mind. Let's take a look at this here, and we'll come back to it after the speeches are done. There's always I'm telling you, there's always like half an hour of speeches. Like I just I I just want questions. So we'll see. I mean, obviously, we're bouncing here. We'll see if it's an actual bounce or if it's just going to die. So, yeah, um, we'll find out. But uh, actually, I'm not even going to draw that. But, yeah, basically, what we're waiting for is confirmation here is, it, you know, this is looking good. It's obviously a higher high, and then it has to be a higher low, and then that would be a nice confirmation that, yes, we are actually heading this way. This might not mean anything if we just go straight down, right? Like, if, if we go lower than the lower of the day, then who cares, right? This doesn't mean much. But if we stay above it and we start building higher highs and higher lows, that's confirmation. We say this every day. It should start sticking in your head at this point. So that's what we're waiting on. For stocks in general, it's not looking good. Uh, a lot of things are red over green for sure. TSMC is breaking the charts with 8%. This thing is going wild. Goodness gracious. All-time highs today. All-time highs. Why? Uh, uh, oh, why TSMC is trading higher today. That's awesome. Announced better than expected fourth quarter financial. Oh, okay. Earnings. Got it. Okay, so earnings came out, went really well, and so this is great for today, but obviously it's just euphoria, and it's probably going to come down tomorrow. That's usually what happens with earnings, uh, euphoria. People get in really quickly and then get out really quickly. That's just it. That's all. But we'll see. How do I think big tech is going to be for earnings? I mean, it depends on the specific company, but I think overall, probably not great. 
probably not great, especially when you're comparing it to like last year. I can't imagine it being great. But well, I mean, I don't know. That's the thing is like you're we're comparing it to like, you know, pandemic level things. So it depends on the company. Some companies absolutely thrived on it. Some companies aren't here anymore, right? So we'll see. TSMC, TSMC, make sure you get that C in there because TSM is a completely different company. But TSMC puts, ah, I mean, you could, but I mean, I don't know. The thing is, like, I don't know a ton about it to be even comfortable doing that. So not me, but if you guys feel it, go for it, go for it. But that is a strategy. People do it all the time. They like wait for the day after, you know, earnings or like end of day earnings, that kind of thing, and then throw puts on it. That is a thing, but it doesn't happen all the time, right? So if you're wrong and it continues to rise the next day, then it's not looking good at all because it might just continue the euphoria, right? It was when, when the pandemic first hit, workers and small businesses in this country certainly haven't forgotten. Why were those actions necessary? And did you support all of them? for uh, asking the question. Um, so I uh, worked uh, day in and day out uh, uh, alongside uh, Secretary Mnuchin at Treasury, uh, Chair Powell, Vice Chair Quarles, and other colleagues uh, to stand up uh, the necessary facilities to calm financial markets. As what is this? you uh, no doubt recall, our financial markets were in turmoil as they absorbed. Microsoft uh, invests the fifty pandemic. million in alcohol uh, to jet fuel bio refinery. Uh, shut what? down uh, because of the risk of infection <laughs> before uh, vaccines were available, and uh, millions of Americans overnight uh, were placed on uh, layoff. And we really Crypto's still risked looking good. Um, losing. Oh, wow. Small businesses okay. around the country, we risk losing medium-sized businesses and the tens of millions of Americans that those businesses employed. And so I think due to the very important actions that Congress took, uh, we worked closely with Treasury uh, to make sure that uh, there was financing available for small banks and CDFIs and MDIs. To we're going back to regular to levels. I think we're on our way. To be honest, the I think we're on our way. But sure I think we'll wait for like rate hikes to actually kick in. So I like give it a couple sure, months, uh, to, uh, and then probably. But even then, I don't know what regular uh, means. Calm. If you if you mean like uh, prior pandemic, as in like 2019 levels, give it like a year, uh, right? Two years and then we'll be at the same kind of like. We've regained all of that. Not the same pricing, but the same kind of action. I can imagine. Probably not until then. I think it's still going to be a little weird um so I was proud to work on that alongside but all wait until the rate hikes we'll get to we'll get to normalcy uh, we'll get there with any of the actions that we took in fact i strongly supported them and worked hard to make them work okay thank you governor director uh, acting director uh, you know better than almost anyone how critical it is that financial institutions to have appropriate capital to be transparent about their risks what have you done so far and what more needs to be done to make sure gses have the capital they need to continue providing access to housing in good and bad times? Right, thank you. Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, I, I firmly believe in don't the safety and soundness a week. of don't feel the housing GSEs, trading. Uh, Not that I don't feel like comfortable doing it, but I've just, honestly, I've just been working on like other things as well. And I more want to cover like the news and everything that affects the market and just to make it very easy and, you know, open for you guys to see. But not that I'm not comfortable with it, but again, it's just kind of something I haven't been doing simple enough. <laughs> it's not been like the main thing for me, but yeah. Uh, I mean, again, we're talking about a market that looks like, oh, you guys have been on this screen for a while. Sorry about that. But again, I mean, huge dip, that kind of thing, waiting for it to come back. I mean, eh. again, there's infinite opportunities. You know, I'm not, I'm not worried that, you know, the timing is coming down to it. Like, eh, it'll be all right. Speaking of which, look at this like near perfect trend line. I haven't zoomed out in a while. Something like this. Kind of nice. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's try that. That's nice. Yeah, look at that. Almost perfectly channel trading. Interesting. Do you think we'll ever hit up here? Do you think give it like, how many days will that be? One, two, three, four, five. Let's see, a week from now, do you think we'll be back up at 480? 483, something like that. 
You think that's possible? That'd be interesting. How do you think banks are going to do? Probably pretty, probably amazing. <laughs> probably amazing. They've been trading super high and, uh, I mean, they've been doing everything right. It seems like so unless, I mean, I don't know of any bank stories as of recent, but I mean, so far in my opinion, they have been absolutely killing it. Yep. David's great call. There you go. Yeah. Perfect W. Bing, 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 bing. Nice. Also called a double bottom, 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 up. So yeah, that's looking good. That looks great. Okay, I want to go back to this though. FHA, which most recently reported that 17% of loans went to black borrowers more, and more than 25% to Latino borrowers. What should GSEs do to make sure that they're serving borrowers of color equally? Thank you really diving question, into Senator. this kind of stuff. Certainly, we believe that every American ought to have sustainable and affordable housing and also places to live if they're renters. With regard to uh, the black and uh, ownership gap, one of the things that we've done is we've asked the enterprises to come up with some equitable housing plans, and they are supposed to focus on and identify barriers that underserved communities, particularly in communities of color, have uh, as it relates to getting a mortgage. They're supposed to identify barriers and then come up with specific plans to execute the, the uh, requirements that they've developed. Uh, we also have a focus, uh, as you all know, on all underserved communities, whether they're rural or tribal and other... Uh, do you guys know if you're filling out like a mortgage loan, like if you're applying or something like that, do you have to fill it in like an ethnicity checkbox? Is that on mortgage loans? Is that a thing? Like white, right? Latino, whatever it is. You like, is that a thing? Asian. Do you have to like fill out that box? Or is that illegal? Admitted to the independent and nonpartisan status of the Federal Reserve. It's very important that Fed decisions on monetary and regulatory policy are entirely free from political interference. So I think this think is a so. simple yes or no question. I feel like they do. I feel like you do have to fill that out, and I feel like that's an easy fix, just not to have that in there, right? Probably optional. Probably, yeah. Oh, yeah, they probably like the prefer not to say thing. But doesn't that, wouldn't that like go against you as well if you prefer not to say you think? Like, isn't that probably like a red flag for the bank if they're like, well, why not? Refi, oh, I'm pretty sure it's on there. I mean, I did like a whole bunch of mortgage, uh, mortgage refinances. I worked for this um, loan officer and I want to say it's on there. I don't remember exactly, but I feel like it is. Even if they do prefer not to say it, I want to say it like shows up as a red, red flag. Not that it's like inherently bad, but um, something to, you know, watch out for, that kind of thing. But that just seems like an easy thing just to like completely get rid of. And then that would fix some of it. Just like don't just forget the ethnicity part of it at all. On uh, issues such as the uh, Community Reinvestment Act, um, we have a very different institution um, and it's a very uh, collegial institution. It is nonpartisan. Uh, and uh, I can tell you a little bit about how I work in that institution, um, just to give you a sense. Well, I'm very limited on time, ah. here, so let me just uh, see. So I know it you lacks commented to me. on Yelena McWilliams, and I appreciate that. Um, and I do understand you'd have had a, a good working relationship with her. But I think they can't act on it. Well, they just won't say that was the reason you didn't get the loan, right? They'd be like, well, it's this, this, and this. You know what I mean? Like they just say they they won't. It wasn't because of that. I mean, I feel I feel like it's really easy to get away with it. Optional on a job application also is a red flag. Hundred percent, it is that kind of thing. Like it's, I don't know why we have it to be honest. I guess just for demographic reason, I guess. But like, what's what's the point? Like, shouldn't you give the loan to the most qualified person? Shouldn't you give the job to the most qualified person? Like, does it matter? Like, why do we even need demographics? Why does that matter? <laughs> uh, to the dual mandate will undermine the Fed's credibility and threaten its independence. And I, I think that's very important. Let me move on um, to climate risk. As you know, the Fed has consistently stated that there are two categories of climate-related financial risk. The first is physical risks, and the second is transition risks. 
Now, the actual data shows that physical risk, that is, actual severe weather events, do not threaten financial stability. This week, Chairman Powell said the possibility of financial stability disruptions from physical risks, quote, doesn't seem likely in the near term, end quote. Well, that's obvious. And there's a recent report from the New York Fed that backs mm. this up. According to the report, weather disasters from the last quarter century had insignificant or small effects on U.S. banks' performance. So do you acknowledge that the likelihood of weather events leading to systemic risk during your term as Fed governor is virtually zero based on historical data? So to be honest, um, I think it's very important for us uh, just to understand uh, potential implications of tail risks. Uh, tail risks are risks that have very, very low probability of happening but have extreme damage. And of course, um, I wouldn't have expected us to need to study pandemics uh, five years ago either. Um, and point. yet a lot of our policy making over the last two years has been really under uh, the cloud of a very complicated set of economic conditions and financial risks associated with a natural event. So, you know, it's our job just to be um, very attentive to potential risks to the financial system. So, so here, here's my concern in this, and I am certainly not alone in this. Um, the other risk, uh, the, the actual evidence shows that there's no real physical risk. The transition risk, though, is real, and Chairman Powell explained the source of that. The source of transition risk is really government policy. And this is what's concerning. Uh, there are lots of risks out there. Um, th there could be a trade war with China. There could be geopolitical turmoil coming from a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, we could have the government uh, engage in shutdowns again in response to a pandemic, for instance. Actually, I would argue each of those poses a greater risk to the financial system than some sort of climate event, which has never resulted in the failure of a major bank. But you haven't advocated doing stress tests around those other risks. The only one I know of that you have advocated is stress tests for the less likely risk, which is the climate-related risk. And the concern that many of us have is that this whole construct, unique to climate risk, even though it is really not a threat certainly in the foreseeable future to the financial system, it's all about a precursor for using the regulatory power of the Fed to direct capital away from politically disfavored industries. So Sarah Bloom Raskin is, uh, by some accounts, might be President Biden's uh, next nominee to be the vice chair for supervision. Now, she's been explicit on this point, and she has argued regarding the implementation of the CARES Act that the Fed, and I quote, should not be directing money to further entrench the carbon economy, end quote. So she's explicitly advocated that the Fed allocate right. capital by denying it to this disfavored sector. And my question is, do you agree with Ms. Raskin that the Fed should play that role? So let me just um, respond uh, to your question, Senator. Thanks for asking. Dude, that was such... I feel like he lost his train of thought halfway through because the question... What was that roundabout reasoning? Like, what just happened? That you just hit, like, four different points and asked a question on something completely different. Financial institutions. We do actually include um, geo, uh, geoeconomic risks in those stress tests. So we have uh, included things like Brexit uh, in our stress test. Um, but I, I certainly have not uh, stated uh, that we should do climate stress tests. Um, in terms of supervisory guidance, what we tend to do is ask large institutions in particular, do Your you bottom. have a good risk management framework for assessing all of your material risks? We would not tell uh, banks which sectors to lend to or which sectors to not lend to, but we do want to make sure that they are measuring, monitoring, and managing their material risks in many large financial institutions. So, so then, us. just to be clear, then, you disagree with Ms. Raskin on this point. So I, I honestly have not uh, studied her say positions. Yes. Um, just say yes. And uh, I would simply say I can speak to um, what we do in our supervisory guidance. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty wow. meat and potatoes. It is very well known to the large institutions. And... Not that, uh, really not that different from what they're doing today. The one thing I would also just want to clarify is I don't think that's appropriate for small institutions. I think small institutions don't have as big a footprint. I think, you know, they, they'll decide 
what their risks are, but I'm really more focused on the large institutions who themselves come in. Dude, I don't, I don't hate Brainerd at all. I mean, she, Brainerd, sorry, I don't hate Brainerd at all. I think she's answering these questions like somewhat well. I mean, yeah, it's like, eh, it's vague, but it's the Federal Reserve. I mean, what do you expect? Specifics? No, right? <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, she's kind of, I mean, she seems to be doing okay. I feel like she got a lot of flack when it was either between uh, Powell and her, but like, I, so far, I don't hate her. <laughs> She seems pretty level-headed, which is kind of nice, but may maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it's all just an act. Serious voice in the room, and if confirmed, I have no doubt that you'll continue in that spirit as we approach Dr. King's uh, birthday commemoration of this coming week. I, I think about this as one of the essential elements of a move towards a more just society. So let me first... Well, the thing also is like she's also like literally like legitimately attempting to answer the question whereas like Yellen for instance like never does like Yellen always skirts around like it's really hard to get a straight answer from her but Brainerd seems like she's like really attempting to like try to answer the base question of what they're saying like even like you saw that uh was it Toomey that was just asking that was just trying to grill her and she really just went through like all the points that he made and just like let me answer everything that you just said like it's it's kind of nice thanks uh, to give us feedback on what would be some good modernization uh, measures uh, so what we hear still from many uh, communities around the country um, is that they still don't have similar access to credit there's still uh, barriers in terms of getting that access. They really like having bank branches in their neighborhoods, but particularly in rural areas, um, that's not always the case. Um, and they want to be. Yeah, I mean, look, like she's like involved in these stress tests, like really actually knows what's going on. Like that's kind of nice. Want, like she's like um, she's almost like excited about the money aspect of of society. Like, it's it's kind of cool. Do tend to be very good at serving those Oops. underserved communities to be strengthened. Um, and they just uh, really care deeply about the Community Reinvestment Act, as do uh, many banks. Uh, so would you commit to making it a top priority to work with the other regulators to issue a strong new rule in a timely fashion? I'll certainly um, support that effort um, at the board and with the other regulators, yes. Okay, I appreciate that because minority communities are hurting right now and this needs to be a priority. The pandemic has brought to light how severe the lack of credit and investment dollars uh, problems are for minority small business owners, and I think it's past time for our regulators to work together and issue an updated and effective CRA rule. So I look forward to your leadership. Ms. Thompson, New Jersey is what I call a blue chip state, a state that spurs innovation and drives the nation's economy. Jersey? According to U.S. News and World Report, New Jersey has the second best public school system in the country and the highest per capita income in the country. In other words, we do a great job of educating our kids and giving them the ability to reach their potential. That's not just because New Jerseyans are smarter than their fellow Americans, uh, but it's because we he invest is not wrong. Uh, in our people. He is not wrong. So... Uh, this is a state that's part of a region that generates 20% of GDP for the entire nation. So we make money uh, for the federal treasury. But New Jersey as, uh, is 20%. We met yesterday, and I appreciated our visit. Of GDP. Uh, I explained how many New Jersey homeowners are being hit with a one two punch. Uh, that sounds a little high. Flood insurance 20 percent in one state alone, state and, and it's not New York or California. Deduction, the it's deduction New Jersey. Internal Revenue Code. Find that hard uh, to believe. And uh, based on, uh, on thanks market to the don't Trump like tax her. Bill, That's what it seems which, like. Um, but why? Reverse both of those bad like, what, what has she done? Because I don't know. I don't know. FHFA, More than happy to be proven. Like to the concerns you know, of homeowners. Go the other way, but I don't know what what she's done that people don't state. like. Yes, we want to be fiscally responsible uh, to the entities, the the GSAs that are under your purview, but. Uh, we can't simply do it on the back. Also, heavy consolidation happening at the low here, which is good to see because usually volume builds up. But sure, we'll see. And oh, thank you for the hold question. on. Certainly, we care very much about um, the high cost loans. As as you know, last Maybe year not. we had we'll a historic increase in home prices, and that hit 
states that have high cost areas, probably harder than most. One of the actions that we undertook was to increase. Yo, I have 915 subscribers, I just found out. That means I'm 85 away. If I get 85 subscribers, I get monetized, finally. I'm so close. I think most of the country is not impacted, but there are about 104 counties across. There's 20 people in here, right? So if if you guys make four burner accounts, make four YouTube burner accounts and subscribe, we're good. We're good. I mean, that's fair. We have excluded from this fee uh, first-time home buyers with uh, area median incomes less than 100 percent, and we've also excluded our affordable. Uh, products so that there is no fee associated with first-time home buyers in, who live in high-cost areas. But we know that there is a huge affordability issue, especially with first-time home buyers, and we did not want to exacerbate that problem. Thank you. Finally, um, Governor Brainerd, uh, the Fed has a serious diversity problem, uh, something I keep pressing. I had it uh, with Chairman Powell, and I, 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 I'm compelled to raise it with you as well. If you're confirmed, what steps are you going to take to improve minority representation, particularly Latino representation, which is uh, among the worst of the of the diversity? So it's been in existence. favor of higher interest rates. Is that well, post pandemic or as in like so in think, pandemic uh, in favor of higher interest rates uh, or in founded, general? Uh, on a recognition of the importance of bringing a diversity of perspectives to the table. That's why we have. Uh, 12 reserve banks you know, all Zachary? across the country, uh, and we have That's branches fair. and communities all across the country. So we have regional diversity. We've always uh, valued sectoral diversity. It's very important to have um, different kinds of backgrounds. But we really have lagged on um, racial and ethnic diversity. Uh, we're seeing some uh, very important changes um, that we've worked very hard um, on at the uh, reserve banks in terms of the boards of directors. If you look there at Latino representation, it's gone up um, threefold just in the last four years. And so now we have about 25% of our Class C directors are Latino. Uh, we have about a third um, that are black. And oh, we, we, can, have, we can go to that uh, real quick. I forgot, I forgot that was happening today. Hold on. We'll come back to this. Oh, there you go. We're on track. We're on track to roll out a website next week where you can order free tests shipped to your home. And in addition to the 500 million, half a billion tests that are in the process of being acquired to ship to you homes for free today... I'm directing my okay, team obviously he's reading from a teleprompter because he's the, he's the U.S. president, but you can see if someone is reading from the teleprompter, if you like look at his eyes, look at the slight movement left to right, or right to left, rather. To meet future demand. And we'll Very slight. Work with the retailers and online and it's online kind of interesting, though. Retailers, uh, to, uh, increase Whoa. And for those who want an immediate test, we continue to add FEMA testing sites. In general, that is fair. People would hate that. I mean, I would hate always having higher interest rates. I think we need it right now. Like, I'm, I don't care that interest rates are rising personally, but I understand that people hate it. I get it. I understand that. testing sites all around the country. You can find the nearest testing sites for you by Googling COVID test near me. Google COVID test near me. And to help uh, lead our federal testing program, Whoa. I've talked, I've, 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 ta I've, excuse me, I've tapped uh, Dr. Tom. Eng I'm, President I'm speaks the truth. Eng 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 Engel Inglesby, correct? Is that right, Jeff? Uh, and uh, he's one of the world's leading infectious disease experts, and I'm grateful for his willingness to help tackle this challenge. Third thing, today we'll discuss our hospital response efforts. Just thanks, just thanks, just since Thanksgiving, over Oof. 800 military and other federal emergency personnel have been deployed to 24 states, tribes, and territories, including over 350 military doctors, nurses, and medics, helping staff the hospitals who are in short supply. This is on top <laughs> like of read the truth. <laughs> National Guard hey man, it's a hard job. Have you ever tried to read from a teleprompter? States. It's it's difficult. It goes quick. Direction, and thanks to the American Rescue Plan, are fully paid for 
by the federal government. COVID test near me. That's we right. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but the president just said, protect if you Google equipment. COVID Gloves, test gowns, near me, to protect front line COVID testing workers. sites We're shipping more will pop up COVID which near is you. It's than at any point it's true. He didn't like. I, I addition, tried to fact I check him on it. He's one hundred percent correct. One hundred percent correct. Territory in the District of Columbia to make sure they have enough hospital bed capacity. Today, I'm announcing our next deployment of six additional federal medical teams, a total of more than one hundred twenty military medical personnel, to six hard hit states: Michigan, Oops. New York. We're joking. We're joking here. Jersey, it's all jokes. Ohio, Rhode Island. And let me close with this. It's been a long Quick road. as we roll it. I've seen like videos of it. I, okay, this guy is obviously not saying anything new, so I'm going to silence it for now. But I've seen like videos of it where for not, I mean, this one is different. Obviously, they control the speed very, and it's probably very slow, and I get that. But I've seen for like newscasters, like the speed of the teleprompter, that thing looks quick. That thing looks really fast. Let's go news teleprompter practice. Uh, okay. Um, okay, let's let's go for it. Okay, Jesus. November 15th, 2018. Here we go. <clears throat> In other news, what's going on here? Wait, what is this? Wait, what is this telling me? Why do I need to know this as a newscaster? What's going on? Good morning. Oh, God. I'm Vicky Valterra, and today in Thursday, November 15th, uh, what is this? What, what's going on? Why do, why, hold on. Why do I need to see this? Currently, there is an overflow in the lost and found, including pencils, bags, and sweatshirts. You can go to the front desk in the main office and pick up your missing items. The Festival of Trees will be held at the Santa Clarita Sports Complex in the center this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the address listed below. Saugus High will, as the tree, will be auctioned off at the event and will be on display in the front office. The Sadie Hawkins Dance is this Saturday, November 17th. Tickets are now on sale in the ASB office and are $20 with an ASB card and $25 without. You can also buy tickets for $30 at the door. The attire is semi-formal. If you're not feeling well or have injured yourself, get a pass from your teacher and head to the health office. What is this? Frames. Do not contact your parents and expect to be summoned from the class. Excuse me? Now let's go to Mr. Marcia and Mr. Lapota with the week's athlete director's minute. I'm failing at this. This is hard. That That's a lot of reading really quickly. I'm not sector a fan. Sector to sector, there are uh, microeconomic that's a lot. Uh, market that's a lot structure, to deal with. other issues at work, supply disruptions at work. That's not where our tools are effective. That lies elsewhere. But I'll we are uh, committed to using the tools that we have why with. why do they why does that show up on the like why does that matter to me who's reading it that like the zoom in and all like well who cares like why does that matter to me that's a good practice speed that is fast for practice that's clearly quick there's been discussions and clearly you have research done as to how much of the inflationary trends that we have are attributable to demand side policy can you share with us what you believe the percentage or at least the amount of, of, of inflation would be attributable to demand side? And the reason why I ask is because if you overreach or if you don't do enough, um, Scripting. Y y you're never going to get it down. But at the mm, same time, okay. with supply side, Still, we both recognize that's... you can't do much about supply Oof, side. Not this easy. Is critical. The price of gasoline is going up because we've got restrictions on the availability of new gasoline being 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 put into the system and high demand for gas, but simply telling a consumer that, that the price has gone up and so we're gonna make it more restrictive for you to buy it, they're still gonna buy gas because they've gotta to get to work. So in well, this particular case, as we look at food prices going up and we look at gasoline going up, price of rents is gonna be going up, price of housing is going up, how much of that, that interest uh, on inflation do you have the responsibility or should you be looking at in terms of the these the demand side of the equation, Governor, Governor, be as brief as you can in your answer. Jesus. Thanks. Well, I'll, I'll certainly uh, just looking at um, uh, prices at the pump, prices at the grocery store. That is clearly hurting Americans all over the country. That's about a quarter of the very high inflation that we see. So I, I think you're certainly True. right to focus in on uh, those areas as a particular energy and food and very worst rooted things. In, Terrible uh, supply side constraints. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Uh, Chairman. Senator Tester is from Montana, is recognized from his office. 
Well, thank you, Chairman Brown. And I want to thank Director Thompson and Governor Brainerd for being here today. Uh, you know, um, um, oh. Director Thompson, you said something in your opening statement that, that is uh, something I think we need to pay attention to, and that is the ownership gap today is wider than it was in the 1960s when discrimination was legal. Okay, I don't, I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm silencing this for now. Oh, we broke below. I, oh my God, I've not been looking. Okay, so we broke below that consolidation uh, phase here, went down. Now we're at 469.50 ish around that area. That's kind of where we're at now. Looks like a little bit of consolidation, and we are trying to break above now with RSI kind of going oversold. Well, uh, we'll see what happens here. It's getting rejected, not at the 50, but like near the 50. You see it? Like, if here's the 50. It's kind of like trying to get up to it and gets rejected. And kind of get up to it or get rejected, I think. I mean, we'll see if it happens again, but that's kind of where we're at. Uh, so really, the question is, when is the low of the day? I, pff, I have no idea. Um, oh, actually, hold on. If we hit the same low as yesterday, that might be something. Maybe people are looking at this. So what is that? 468.82. I mean, that's a dollar away. So I mean, it's possible. But yeah, I feel like that is a decent. Yeah, hold on. Let's go look at a five minute chart to make it a little bit more clear. Yeah. So you can see here, this is like a pretty uh, notable, right? Price level. You can see it like kind of hits it. And then when it does hit it, it kind of bounces pretty heavily. So maybe the same exact thing is going to happen today. It's possible. Um, maybe. Doesn't have to, definitely doesn't have to, but it's something to look out for. That's kind of the next support I'm seeing. Uh, is there one, like this is a support right here where my mouse is at, but I don't know, it's not very strong. And I've only seen like one twice, uh, I guess kind of there too. It's a support. I wouldn't say it's a strong support, but a support. But yeah, I'd say the next big support is this one right here at 469 flat, let's just call it to make it easy. And then, Go back to the big picture. Oh no, I just messed up everything. Oh man. That was a perfect line. All right, whatever. It's around there. Okay. So yeah, this is kind of where we're at. Resistance, however, clear resistance right here at 473. Seems like breaking that seems to be kind of difficult. Yeah, something like here. Yeah, maybe even below that. Yeah, like here-ish, I'd say, is like a, a clear resistance, something like that. That is at 472.29. Eh, I don't know, something like that. More like 473, but close to there. So that's kind of where we're in, right? Actually, this is, yeah, perfectly kind of channeled within that. Uh, 468 is the lowest. Uh, sorry, 469 is the support that I see. That's a strong one. And a strong resistance would be 473. So we'll see if we can like stay within that channel. Maybe we'll even hit the top. Look, we'll see. That's kind of what I'm seeing though. Nothing. Oh yeah. Take a look. Almost perfect lines. Almost perfect lines. But that's kind of where, what I'm seeing right now. Again, it's a little bit hard because I, it seems like buying sentiment has been high on the past 48 hours. Like the past two days, buying sentiment has been pretty high and nice. But again, like what happened yesterday, right? Like it was high, we dropped heavy and then it kind of, you know, recovered. So maybe it's the same exact thing today where like early it went great. We're dropping heavy and then it will just recover the rest of the day. That's possible. We might just see the same exact day as yesterday, actually. I mean, look at it. Look at the graph. It's actually like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not perfectly uh, same, but like same kind of structure. You know what I mean? Up, down, recover. Up, down, recover. Maybe. That'd be kind of, that'd be hilarious if we had the same exact day as yesterday. That'd be super funny. It's possible. It's possible. But yeah, that's kind of what I'm seeing. It looks like we are attempting to bounce up again. I'm not going to call it a real bounce until we break this 50 because clearly that's the test. So if we can, that's great. But I, I don't know if we will. I don't know if we will. Um, so there's that. Uh, how's stocks doing in general? Everything's coming down from the green side and things are quite red. Snapchat's down 6.5%, Affirm, Peloton, yeah, things are definitely red. So there's that. SoFi, I see, yeah, a lot of things. Dang. United Airlines, strangely, at up 4%, Boeing, oh, yep, so it looks like travel, travel's up. Wind Resorts, yeah, travel, okay. 
Uber, yeah. So it looks like travel is up. But other than that, no real sector shining. Let's look at the markets. Aerospace and defense, I guess. Oh, because Boeing and so forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. And then transportation. Yeah, okay. So it looks like, yeah, exactly. Flights and transportation. Those are the things that are up right now. Why? I don't know. But that's that's the sector that's shining currently. Sick. Awesome. It is nine, so I do have to get going here. Sadly, I know I started late. I'm really sorry about that. But, you know, I'll be on, uh, what's today, Thursday? So tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow I'll be back on. I promise I'll be on. I'll set two alarms this time so I actually get up. But yeah, I'll be on tomorrow. No worries. But yeah, I'm going to st st uh, blah, blah, blah. Start it th stop it there. To buy condos in Las Vegas in 2000. This guy has his pointer finger out. But you don't have to accept their, their advice. Terrifying. Yeah, you guys can feel free to keep watching this uh, stream. It is, it's, I mean, I think it's pretty interesting to see exactly what's going on, what's going on through the heads of the Federal Reserve, what they want to do, that kind of stuff. But feel free not to. I'll cover anything tomorrow that they say. I'll summarize it. But, you know, have a good day, everyone. I'm going to call it there. And yeah, I got things to do. All right. See you guys.